Shooting in NBA 2K19 is ever-changing, but one thing that remains the same is any build can shoot. If you don't believe me, please stick around for this video. I'll give you the secrets. This is a 6'10 pure slasher with a 50 three-point rating. Coming down the court, shooting limitless range, top of the key three-pointers consistently. Yes, I promise stick around, you won't regret it. Listen guys, if you're looking for a stacked NBA 2K19 account, an account with a high overall, maxed out badges, and everything you could want, hit up my boy Sports TMB. The link to his Twitter will be in the description, man. Tell him that I sent you, and he will hook you up. I couldn't really find an excuse to put this clip of me dunking into a video, so I'm just going to put it here. If you want to see IRLs, please comment down below. Some people are demanding it, some people not, so comment below if you want to see more IRLs. What's going on guys? Today I wanted to bring you a video about shooting. Now, I haven't done a shooting video in a while and before obviously as you see in the clips I was you know I was a stretch big so the shooting tips I gave obviously they were helpful but a lot of you didn't believe them because you're like you know I'm not a stretch I'm not a sharp you know my shot is so much less consistent than yours you know they can't really apply. Well now you guys know I have my 6'10 slasher and my three point rating as we speak is a 52 and you know, people are tweeting out like, you know, they play me or they play with me and they're tweeting out things like, you know, this man is the best shooting slasher they've ever seen. And whether that's true or not, I don't really care, but I just want to give you some tips for players that are not, um, you know, stretches and sharps. Now, stretches and sharps, listen, if you're, you know, for your base of your jump shot, if you're not using LA, in my opinion, you're putting yourself at a handicap. Like it's the best base, but not for players that are not sharps and lot sharps and stretches like you have to be a sharp or a stretch to use la in my opinion it's not bad but i just feel like catch and shoot it's not the best base for somebody that has a 53 point rating so if you're a slasher or a lockdown or something like that the best base right now is set shot 13. if you don't like set shot 13 because it does feel a little weird honestly i would use amateur one those are in my opinion those are the two bases you should be going with and if you're not using those bases, I mean, maybe you have another one that you like, but in my opinion, it's just like, those are the two best bases. I use set shot 13, okay? So let's check out my slasher here. There's gonna be a lot of information in this video, so please stick with me, hear me out. There's gonna be a lot of helpful things in here that you that you probably don't even realize, all right? But as you see here, let's go. You see I'm a pure slasher, small forward. I am 6'10", it doesn't show my height on the screen. I don't know why they did that. But anyways, a 6'10", pure slasher, okay? Let's go down, look at the three-point rating just to confirm to you. It used to be a 48, but I got a, a recent upgrade and it goes up, uh, went up by four. You see open shot three is a 52. You see the badges, all right? So obviously on a pure slasher or a pure lock, you don't get many shooting badges, but one badge you do get is corner specialist, which obviously helps you shooting from the corner. That's not anything you guys don't know. But something I wanna tell you about this, Usually if shooting from the corner, you're going to be shooting catch and shoot shots. I mean, everyone agrees about that, I would think. Now, check it out. When you shoot catch and shoot, and a lot of people are really bad at shooting catch and shoot, honestly. Even stretch big, I see them shoot catch and shoot. They shoot all whites this year. And it's, you know, it really blows my mind that people don't understand how to catch and shoot in this game. If you are holding the shoot button before your player catches the ball, it is going to be much harder to green a catch and shoot shot i don't know why i don't know if it just throws off the timing or what but you need to wait until that ball hits your player's hands then hold the shoot button it'll make a world of a difference man I, i've tried to explain this to people and I, I don't know i guess they just don't believe me but you see how consistent my slasher shoots and a lot of times yes it's from the corner but i only have bronze corner specialists like I see players who cannot shoot consistent corners, and I think it's because they're holding the shoot button before uh, they actually catch the ball. Now, the next badge let's talk about is it's not even a shooting badge, but nobody in this game realizes how effective and how overpowered this badge is. Honestly, I can make a whole video about this badge in particular, one man fast break. I have it on gold. On a pure slasher, it goes to Hall of Fame. I don't have it there yet, obviously, but even at gold, this badge is insane and you probably are like yeah shut up it, you know oh you're gonna go in transition and dunk whatever no no watch okay so as you can see here i'm on my slash i have my takeover i'm gonna drive in i'm gonna do a hop step go up dunk beautiful play okay but that's not what one man fast break is about that's what you think it's about you think it's about oh you can you know get dunks in transition better this badge will allow you to shoot so much more consistent now how do you activate this badge 
When you or your teammate gets a steal, it activates. If you're running down the court, you know, you get one man fast break. You see there, pull up top of the key, one man fast break pops up in the top right corner and it activates, allows you to shoot so much more consistent. Just look at this whole sequence. Another way it activates is getting a rebound, which I'll show you in a second, but this whole sequence is just steals, okay? Like we're playing rec, obviously you're not playing uh, high level competition usually in the rec. We get another steal, my teammate throws me the ball, I take one dribble, shoot the three from the wing slash corner kind of area, another green, okay? Off the inbounds, again, we're gonna come up with another steal. So every time you or your teammate teammates get a steal, if you're running down the court, this badge is gonna activate. You see, I get a steal here, go behind the back, stop pull up bang it is insane what this badge does man and i feel like nobody even realizes it now check it out off a of missed free throw i get the rebound come down the court they're like oh he's a slasher let's back up pull up top of the key like one foot behind the three-point line knock it down with the green again off another free throw this is a different free throw obviously i'm not showing the same clip back to back get another rebound pull up a foot behind the top of the key green one man fast break is one of the best badges in the game, okay? So that's that's something that I have not seen anyone really talk about. Like I said, I could honestly make a whole video about one man fast break because it's honestly the most underrated badge in the game, but I'll leave it at that for now. Other things to consider when shooting that a lot of you probably have heard, but some of, I'm, I'm sure some people don't know these things. First thing is hot spots. I don't have my hot spots on my slasher yet, so you can shoot without hot spots, but if you get your hot spots, you're going to shoot more consistent. More whites will go in when you have a hot spot as opposed to no hot spot, okay? And I noticed that on my stretch in the beginning of the game, and I've noticed that with a lot of the lockdowns and uh, kind of, you know, off ball players that I played with, you know, they were missing quite a bit. As soon as they got their hot spots, everything changed. Another thing, uh, we talked about jump shot bases, we talked about badges, we've talked about uh, hot spots. Another thing is your takeover meter. Obviously, you're not a shooter, right? So your takeover isn't going to give you the, the sharp shooter ability or whatever. But I'm telling you right now, I feel like, and this might just be me, I feel like if I get a dunk early on in the game, and not saying that gives me takeover, but you know your takeover meter goes up a little bit, like you're heating up, I feel like I shoot better. Even on my slasher, even on uh, you know my rebounding rim protector. Builds that are not shooters, I feel like I shoot better as long as I have a little bit of like momentum gain on my takeover bar, just because I feel like, you know, you're heating up. Um, what else? Badges we talked about, but what about your teammates badges, man? So you're thinking like, oh, dimer, duh, like everybody knows that, like, of course. But what about pick and roll maestro? Even if you don't have pick and popper, like say my rim protector doesn't have pick and popper. If I set a screen, my point guard uses the screen and then I pop to the top of the key, I shoot more consistently. Why? Well, I don't have pick and popper, but he has pick and roll maestro. So every time he hits your screen, that boosts not only his shooting ability, but his passing ability too. So you're going to shoot more consistent off of that pick and pop, even if you don't have pick and popper badge. I don't know if anybody realizes that, but that is that is the way it works. So you as an inside center or you know a slash or a lockdown, if you set a screen and then pop somewhere, that is going to activate as long as your point guard has pick and roll maestro obviously you got to consider that but as long as he has that badge it's going to help you shoot even better than just his normal dimer will alone all right so that's another thing for you guys to think about the last thing is going to be pretty obvious to any like super try hard players out there but to more casuals or newer players like i don't know if they're against doing this or what but getting boosts for your player whether you win it on the wheel win ruffles or you just buy boosts from the stand boosts make a hell of a difference okay like i can't even explain to you the difference of shooting with my slasher with boosts and with no boosts like everyone who is a good shooter has boosts on their player i'm telling you that right now i know there's gonna be someone in the comments like you know oh i don't run boosts and i shoot 100 from three well good for you you're just the best player in the world but the rest of us that are not the best player in the world we run boosts all the time and you might think that's cheap or corny or whatever but if you want to shoot really, really well, especially on a player that isn't a shooter like my 6'10 slasher, you need to get boosts, okay? Uh, besides that, I mean, those are basically just a quick synopsis of like everything I've learned about shooting from playing the game on a stretch, on a sharp, on a lock, on a slasher, on a post score, on a, rebound, on a, a rim protector, on a rebounder, on all these different builds. This is what I've learned about shooting, man. I hope this helped you guys out. Please subscribe if you're new, almost at 200K. Make sure you drop a like down below. And that's about it, man. You guys have a great day. I'm out.